right, well, here we are back on the Making Ways podcast. This is going to be an interesting one because we're joined by fellow podcasters. And in the spirit of DevSec, this is not about competition. This is about collaboration here today. So, fellas, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Sure. Thank you very much for having us on, and you know, congratulations on a successful podcast thus far. I think we're a little bit behind you in terms of hours recorded, but yeah. uh, we'll do our best to catch up with you. My name is Kevin Tetro. I'm with Edelman Public Affairs, and I'm also a partner of the Canadian GovTech community, and I'm joined with my colleague, Mitch McDonald. Hey, Mitch McDonald, uh, co-founder of the Canadian GovTech community, and uh, yeah, we're excited to be on here with you guys. and. Uh, learn a little bit about your experiences and hopefully share our experiences podcasting. Well, you know, it's interesting. There was a lady on earlier. I can't remember who said it, Alan, but she called, I think it might have been Luis Mercier. Coopetition. This is why we <laughs> want you on. This is coopetition is what this yeah. is. This is fantastic, guys. So Jerry and I always like, we're two fellows from Newfoundland, so we always like to dive a little bit deeper before we get into the conversation around what you're doing. So where are you from? I'm from Ottawa. Don't hate me for it. No. <laughs> he lived in Ottawa. I lived in oh, Ottawa. Yeah. I visited there more time than I can mention. Your whole life in Ottawa? <laughs> yeah. Born and raised in Ottawa, and that's where we currently are. Yeah. Right on. How about yourself? Born and raised in Ottawa, uh, okay. but spent some time in Miami, Florida, and uh, a little bit of time in New Brunswick, too. Tell me about Miami. What brought you down there? Sailing. I was a professional sailor. See? This is cool. How about New Brunswick? <laughs> Uh, family property there, so right. uh, that's been in my mother's side of the family for about 62 years. Right on, you got a little bit of Atlantic Canadian yeah, a little blood Atlantic in you. that's fantastic. Yeah. So Jerry, why don't you tell them a little bit about our podcast? Well, yeah, so make, uh, Making Waves is what we are doing right now, but in December, Alan and I started a podcast uh, called uh, Gale Force Winds. We had been chatting through the pandemic, yeah. and Alan and I were together in the Navy 30 35 years ago, grew up in St. John's. Alan lives in PEI, I live in St. John's. We decided that why don't we bring a guest in? So we did, we named it, and uh, I guess the rest is history. We're, we're starting to get a lot of requests to do this type of thing. And uh, I think having you guys on is, is interesting to us, you know? We, we want to mentor, despite the fact we're only eight months <laughs> in, but, you know, we are a little bit older than you guys, so we've been around the business world, you know? But I didn't think it was going to go that direction. <laughs> I didn't think we were going to talk about our age here. But, was, but I had to tell you, you know, Jerry and I started this to tell inspirational stories, to provide some, you know, positive messaging throughout the pandemic. And, and I got to tell you, we've learned more about ourselves and people that we're engaging with uh, than we could have ever imagined. It's a really amazing experience. And to take it into a defense and security trade show, yeah. it's pretty special, right? Yeah. Because we're tapping into people, where they come from, and kind of making those connections, and then finding out about what they do. So that's kind of what we do. What do you guys do? Mitch, you want to take a stab? Yeah, sure, I'll take a stab at it. Uh, so basically, GovTech speared off. Uh, we ran a host of events uh, last year. I think it was last year, yeah. pandemic time, right? I know. <laughs> Moves at light of speed. But uh, yeah, we were, hosted a couple of events in GovTech um, and they were quite successful. And we kind of saw a hole in the market of bringing tech companies together with the government and really creating interactions. Um, and we always partnered up with uh, universities, different universities around the country um, to kind of provide an interesting take on it and create those conversations. Um, whether the government's purchasing from the companies or the companies are looking for ITBs or various other connections to kind of make uh, Canadian citizens have the technology that we're all looking for in, uh, in our government. Yeah, really. and I can kind of build on that a bit because, you know, being in uh, public relations for a long time, working with companies trying to break into the government, selling the government is not easy, right. yeah. you know, even for the large companies, right? But let alone a startup. You're a startup in, you know, Medicine Hat and you want to sell to the government of Canada. It's not that easy, no. right? And you and they don't necessarily have the resources to go and buy a lobbyist to go help them break in, right? Yep. So we decided to try to connect everyone on neutral ground. And it's not about selling, it's about telling government telling people what they're working on and companies telling them how they can help meet those needs. And that's what we try to achieve through the summits that we had, wherein we had provinces and the federal government, the Department of National Defense, for instance, presenting on their projects and priorities, and then companies responding to them and trying to say how they can help, particularly in the Canadian startup community. So that's what we're doing. And initially we started with uh, summits, so these 12 hour long summits that were kind of insanely long. Yeah. And now we've kind <laughs> of- project. Yeah. And now we kind of broke them into pieces. So as opposed to having 12 hour event, instead we'll have provincial CIOs coming on, telling them about 
telling us about what they're working on, and maybe an industry partner coming in and saying how they're helping so you're, them. So you're saying you had a 12-hour online event. Yeah. 12 hours. 12 straight. hours. Three of them, we had three of them. West Coast <laughs> and we had East Coast. We covered the full day on both. And participants would usually be on for how long? We had some participants stay on for the quite a few hours. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but you know, at the end of the day, we record these things, we break them into pieces, make them digestible, right. yeah. and that's why we came up with the podcast model. It's a little bit, a little bit easier to, for people to, to digest, right. you know, on their own terms. Right. You know, yeah, I love that, right? So it's it's allowing people to consume this content on their own terms. Right? Yeah, I think yeah. that's the trick, right? And to tr you know, that was great in the entertainment business and, and the like, but now we're kind of taking that into the business development world. Yeah. Right? And like, yeah, it's exactly. a cool thing, right? Exactly. I mean, we, we really focus on the long form, so the podcast style stuff, but uh, we've done a really great job of trying to break that up into little pieces, whether it's five minute little snippet that provides somebody a piece of valuable information that might help them. Right. Whether it's guide them to a part of the government that they can maybe win a contract or start a connection there or a bigger prime looking for SMEs to work on projects with them. Mm -hmm. I tell you, one of the things that I enjoy the most about our podcast is that Jerry and I started off by getting to know the person a little bit. I find that that really drops a lot of the barriers. Right away. Do you guys do a similar thing? Uh, sometimes, yeah. It just depends on the person. But, uh, I mean, we had uh, Coding for Veterans on recently. Right. I saw you guys had him yeah, on recently, yeah. too. Yeah. But uh, he was a great in terms of telling the story. So yeah. I find it really interesting to try and get the story from somebody about the company. Yeah. It also helps it kind of bring it down to earth. And, yeah. Especially if he's a bigger guy, like yeah. bigger company and everything, yeah. kind of has some of the small businesses can look and see yeah. what they did, see their story, see how they got to where they are. Sometimes. Well, it's interesting, you know, uh, thinking about Genoa Design and them inviting us to do this, they did a uh, Instagram post, a couple of social media things talking about thought leadership and voices of the industry. Yeah. When you think about it, this, this uh, you know, group of people come together and then they kind of fade away and, and yeah. but what this company is doing yeah. with having us here and being able to record them such that the uh, conversations, important conversations, are remembered right. and can yeah. be revisited. Yeah. That to me is leadership and I, I thank Genoa Design for giving us the opportunity to do yeah. that. You know, it's interesting, I've been to a lot of trade shows in my, in my life and in all different sectors, not only defense, I've never seen anything like this. This yeah. kind of live conversation being recorded as Jerry says, it's kind of a neat, I think it's going to be a new model that might find itself because I can tell you what you know design here has done is it allowed a lot of people into the conversation with just the barriers dropped, saying where the opportunities exist, what they're excited about. I mean, that's fantastic stuff. Right? right. Yeah, I think at the end of the day, it's all about building community. And that's the one thing we learned last year when we were holding events. And we've done a lot of events too, right? Yeah. And to be honest, they were quite often, if you're doing a standalone event, they're absolutely painful to do because you have to invite people, right? Yeah. So what we decided to do is opposed to building up an event every single time, which is awful, we are building a community on social media and whatnot. So we don't need yeah. to actually go invite anybody anymore. They're already there they're in one spot. There, yeah. so we publish our content and everyone can well, get it. Well, I can relate want. to that, Kevin, because sometimes <laughs> it's hard enough just to get the one speaker to come on for the podcast, <laughs> exactly. let alone trying to make an event out of it. Yeah. But you know, your card says Canadian Gov community so you're living yes. it you know you're yeah. walking the walk you're walking the talk community is what you're doing yeah. well i can tell you this first time we've ever had podcasters on yeah. it's been a real pleasure to meet both of you yeah. and I wish you all the success i hope there's some collaboration in our future for sure i think i think there's uh we've got a lot of synergies here I'm yeah glad stopped and i'm glad we're into this conversation thanks very thanks much for having yeah. us thank you so yeah. much guys, you guys. Cheers.